I'm Lauren Cochran, the Director of Clinical Faculty Development at CUNY School of Medicine, and in this video I'm going to tell you a little bit about our school and our clerkships. We are the only public medical school in New York City, and we graduated our first class of physicians in 2020 as an outgrowth of the Sophie Davis Biomedical Education Program, which began in the 1970s. Our seven-year combined bachelor's MD program continues with the same mission to recruit students from historically underrepresented backgrounds into medicine, and particularly to train primary care providers to work in under-resourced communities. Our students can go into whichever field they want, but we do have many students match each year into the primary care fields. Let's talk about our clerkships beginning in the M3 year. For family medicine and internal medicine, our coordinator is Marvia Alston. For surgery and pediatrics, our coordinator is Juana Carmona. For OBGYN psychiatry and neurology, our coordinator is Cynthia Smith. You may be hearing from our coordinators from time to time about things like student evaluations, and they are great resources for any questions about the clerkship, in addition to your clerkship director. Moving on to the M4 year, the final year of medical school, our curriculum includes emergency medicine, sub-internships, intensive care, and a number of electives. The coordinator for all M4 clerkships is Marsha Bailey. Moving on to learning objectives. Every medical school has educational program objectives, or EPOs, that each student needs to achieve before graduation. All of ours are listed on this website, and here's one example from patient care. Students should be able to obtain an accurate and thorough patient-centered medical history from patients, families, other healthcare providers, and electronic health records, including through a medical translator. The other EPO categories are medical knowledge, lifelong learning, communication skills, professionalism, systems-based practice, and population health. These may look very familiar. They align closely with the ACGME categories for residents. Then each clerkship has its own learning objectives that align with the EPOs but are more specific. Like for pediatrics, it's important that history taking is tailored to the patient's age and includes parents as appropriate. And all of the learning objectives for each clerkship are included in the syllabus. And to help us ensure that students are meeting these learning objectives, students track a number of things over the course of the clerkship. Required clinical experiences are diagnostic or procedural categories such as well child newborn or respiratory distress that students are supposed to see at some point during the clerkship. We monitor these to make sure that students are seeing what we think they're seeing in the hospitals and clinics. The second thing students track is daily direct observations. Our goal is that each student would be observed very briefly, like two minutes, once per clinical day. This can be any piece of the history, physical exam, giving information to a patient. And our role as supervisors is just to tell the student verbally one thing they did well and one suggestion for improvement. Students then track this information in an app called TRES. Important to know, these direct observations do not impact a student's grade. Just to give you an example, let's say you're working with a student in the emergency department and you go with them and observe the first two minutes of a patient encounter. Afterwards, you might give them feedback like, I really like how you let the patient fully articulate her chief concern without interrupting. Next time, just remember to give a full introduction, including which team you're working with. So that's one thing done well, one suggestion for improvement. And I love this particular example because it allows the supervising resident or attending to lay eyes on the patient um, and then you can excuse yourself and say please continue I'll be back in just a bit and let the student continue on with the HNP. Students also log a mandatory direct observation for each clerkship. You can see the content here. These observations only need to be completed once during the clerkship and there's an associated checklist for a supervisor to complete. Someone will ask you if they need your help with this. Um, just like the daily direct observations, these do not impact a student's grade. Speaking of grading, in the M3 year, clinical evaluations are currently worth 50% of each student's final grade. We also take into account their performance on the shelf exam, their OSCE, and their assignments and logs as we were just going through. 
In the M4 year, grading is based just on clinical evaluations, but students must also submit their required clinical experience logs in order to pass the clerkship. Our grading scale is honors, high pass, and pass. And for more information about grading and specifically the clerkship assessment form, we have a separate video. Just as residents and attendings evaluate students, students also evaluate us. From time to time, students complete surveys related to the LCME, the accrediting body for medical schools in the US, and also the Association of American Medical Colleges, AAMC, including the graduation questionnaire that all students complete at the end of their fourth year. But we also have our own evaluations that students complete at the end of every clerkship. Students rate all aspects of the clerkship, including attending and resident teaching, and we have space where they can provide comments, any information they wanna share with the school. These end of clerkship evaluations are one way students can report mistreatment anonymously, but we also specifically ask about whether a clerkship is providing a positive learning environment. And often this perception is heavily influenced by really small things such as making an effort to learn your student's name on their first day. No one likes to be referred to as the student. Or just including them when you and a colleague are discussing a patient they're following. Basically treating students with kindness and respect the way any of us would like to be treated. Students are also asked to fill out separate evaluation forms about the instructors they work with most closely. As you can see here, there are four Likert scale questions, plus space for narrative comments. Instructor assured that roles and responsibilities for patient care were clearly defined, and then they choose a rating from one to five. Instructor communicated appropriately with students and was responsive. Instructor was clear about core concepts. Instructor was professional. It's extremely important to us that we protect students against any kind of retaliation. So evaluations are submitted anonymously and then compiled and shared at the end of each academic year. We do hope these instructor evaluations will be helpful to you in your professional growth as a medical educator and can also be useful in terms of promotion, teaching portfolios, etc. Your clerkship director is likely to be your first point of contact, but you're also welcome to reach out to us at any time. Again, I'm Lauren Cochran, the Director of Clinical Faculty Development, also our Associate Dean for Clinical Medical Education, Dr. Lisa Auerbach, and our Associate Dean for Student Affairs, Dr. Medea Akhtar, especially if you have concerns about a student. And our email addresses are listed on the right. They're all at med.cuny.edu. Many thanks for your attention and for the work that you all do every day teaching and supporting our students.